Thank you, thank you. I, I had one of the last regular talks of uh, EuroPython. Uh, it's been a wonderful EuroPython, but I have to admit, if we had three more days to go, I don't think I would make it. I'm tired, I don't know about you. Uh, but in any case, I want to talk a little bit about objects. I am going to cover things that are very simple and some things that are very complicated. Uh, I will try to go quickly through the simple things, but for all of it, this is a Jupyter Notebook, and you can find the Jupyter Notebook there, QR code, it's linked from the uh, talk page on uh, the EuroPython website. You can play around. There is even a, at the very, very end, a special bonus piece of silliness that you can play with in terms of um, playing around with meta classes that has, I promise you, absolutely no real world use at all, and that is why I love it. Uh, so, to, to move along, in Python, you will see this quite often, everything is an object. And you will also find, if you look, that there are a lot of people who wonder about this. What is everything? Everything is an object, does that mean Constants are objects. Should mean an instance of a class is an object. But uh, what about functions? What about a package? Are those objects? Uh, and if you come from other languages, uh, you may have some very, very definite ideas about the answers to those questions. And they may not be Python's ideas about the answers to those questions. So. I'm going to start with some simple stuff, try to move quickly here, but um, if you have something like, say, negative one, it's constant, is that an object? Of course, in many cases, many languages it would not be, uh, but here if we use is instance to ask, is negative one an object? Um, wake up interpreter, come on, it is. Uh, okay, so that's easy. And if we were to ask, well, okay, if it's an object, it must be an instance, uh, you know, it must have all of these various object G methods then, does it? Well, yes, of course it does. Uh, and that also must imply then that it's an instance of a class. And again, no surprise, it is. All right, so, well, that's, that's a simple one. What about functions then? Let's make a very, very simple function like this, and asks the same question, is a function an object? Okay, now, and I imagine that the majority of you know how this one is going to go, but yes, it is. Now, what class is a function? Well, that's obvious, it's a function. Uh, okay, fair enough. If we use modules, though, so I import math. Is that thing I have imported an object? So again, some of you are very confident of the answer and, and probably most of you will have at least a good guess, uh, but let's, let's confirm, yes, it is. So what class is that object? Hmm? Well, Python doesn't really like to surprise us, it's a module. What do you expect? But there's other stuff, right? Like there's none. None is its own little special thing. Uh, you can't, you know, none is, a, a, is reserved in the sense that you can't make your own variable called none. It won't let you do that. So is none an object? Well. You probably thought so, and if you did, you were right. Um, and what class is none? Okay, uh, again, most, m many of you may know it, it's none type. It has its own special type. There is a class none type that none is an instance of, and there's only one of them, and you can't mess with it. Fair enough. What about the debug flag? Now here's something I've found that a lot of times people who are just starting out in Python aren't even aware of the Dunder debug flag. Uh, it's, it's kind of 
in terms of, quote, a variable. It's the only constant variable in Python. It's set by the, in when you run the interpreter. Uh, and it's either true or false. And by default, it's true. And uh, this is a fun fact for junior developers. If for some reason debug gets set to false, all of your asserts just go away. They just go away. Uh, this surprises people sometimes. So is that an object? Yes. And actually asking what class it is, this is kind of an obvious one. It's true or false. It's Boolean. Fair enough. How about ellipsis, the three dots, meaning to be continued or you know partial or whatever. Is that an object? Well, of course it's an object. What class is it? Well, it looks really weird to type that. When I type dot, 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 I, I you see it would be wrong, but no, it's right. It's there, it has a class attribute, and it's an ellipsis. Again, Python doesn't want to surprise us. That's all pretty easy. What about things like those symbols? I, I just picked uh, the minus symbol uh, to test. Are those objects? I mean, we don't have time. I'd really kind of like to do a survey here and get some answers as to this, but, uh, well, no, of course not. I mean, you just get a syntax error because this is part of the machinery of Python. Um, same thing if you have any of these reserved words, which was just kind of the uh, off the top of my head list. Uh, I chose in as my example. Is in an object? No. Again, that, that, that throws a syntax error because you know, we kind of need those bits and pieces to work with the rest of the language. But other than those kinds of things, everything is an object. Everything is an instance of a class, which then leads to the next question, are classes objects? Again, if you've been around for a while, you probably uh, have an idea about this. If you're newer to Python, it may not be so obvious. So if you're there thinking, oh, I don't know, it's okay, because I have seen a lot of people who do not know the answers to this off the top of their head. But let's make a class. I'm gonna make a duck class. It's kind of my own duck typing joke that I don't never get over, so expect to see a lot of ducks. Uh, so we're just gonna make a very minimum class. And just ask the question, is that an object? And a class is an object. Okay, if you were coming from C++ or Java, you might get a, a, a somewhat different answer. There are lots of places where this isn't quite the same thing. Uh, and then what is the class of a class? Okay, getting a little bit meta here, although we're still kind of in the, in the shallow waters. But, but what, what is the class of a class? Uh, well, the class of a class is type. So what's a class? A class is a type. Wait a second. Uh, this is true, okay? In fact, and I'll mention this a little bit later on, uh, type and class in Python are synonyms of each other. They're used in different situations, but they are the same thing. Okay, so we got object and type. So, and here I just give you both variations. You could say type object, or you could do dunder class on object, you get the same thing. But my question is, for all of you language lawyers in the room, what is the type of object then? Everything inherits from object. That means that they're all instances of a class. So what is object's class? Okay, this is where in my informal survey, I, I found some people starting to scratch a little bit and go, huh. That's, uh, so, let's end the suspense. Uh, the type of a class is type. You might not have been expected, you're like, well, isn't there an object type? No, it's type. It, it, it is the, uh, I don't know to sound German or whatever, it's the ur type, I suppose. It is the type of types, but that's its, its uh, thing. And then I suppose we, since we're kind of going down this rabbit hole, we might as well ask what's the type of a type? 
what's the class of a class? And we're kind of getting self-referential here. So it is also a type. But wait. Let's, let's, let's see here. So are we saying that a type is an object? Yes. Are we also saying that an object is a type? Yes. Hmm. Does that mean an object is equal to type? What do you think? Uh, no. All right, let, let's dig a little bit deeper here. Let me back up. Is an object the subclass of type then? Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. No, all right, we're, we're closing in now. But type is a subclass of object. All right, I don't really have any cosmic significance for you to get out of all of this other than showing how these are kind of interrelated. Uh, so, you know, everything is an object, which means it is uh, also a, an instance of a class, but even object is an instance of the class type, et cetera. So we're kind of, basically, I ended up thinking about, as, as I was doing this, I, there, I decided that is how I want to think about uh, object and type. Uh, you can choose your own illustration, uh, but I thought I would pick a classic Escher one for this. So that kind of sets, sets the groundwork, but it leaves a bunch of implications kind of unaddressed. So we now know that everything, mostly, uh, is an object that means it's an instance of a class. But that kind of begs the question of some of the, what should I say, some of the surprising silliness you can get out of classes in Python. And again, some of these things, if you are coming from another language, will strike you as strange indeed. Actually, I've been doing Python for now 25 years, and they strike me as somewhat surprising sometimes. Uh, so what's a class? Well, it's an object of type type. We've already established that. And you, know, you make it with class and all of that. So let's make a class and have a quick peek at what we get when we, we make our minimum duck class here again. Okay, you do that and you like can do a doer on it to see what's there and it's like, oh my goodness, we have all of this stuff that we just created with just, you know, pass. Uh, except that really most of those attributes you see are inherited from object. If we look at just what's in our minimum class, it only has a few things. It's got you know, a module entry, it's got a, a, a dictionary, which is what we're looking at right now, uh, reference tracking, and a, and a doc attribute, Oops, sorry. Uh, and that's about it. So let's, let's add a few more things and see what happens, because this is when the silly stuff starts. So we want to add an instance method. It's just the same as a function. We use uh, def and, and, a, and a name, and it has to have a parameter self. Uh, and again, the name self is used by convention. It could be anything. Um, but if you are writing a class, use self or the other kids will make fun of you on the playground. So don't do that. Um, all right, so let's, let's add a, uh, a method to duck. So we're going to make a hello method that basically will print, uh, hi, I'm a duck. And let's, let's make Donald, which is actually a specific instance of duck, and test out the hello method. It's pretty simple. Hello, I'm a duck. Well, I'm brilliant. Um, the other thing we can do, of course, is have attributes on the instance. Again, we use self by convention. So we can do things like, you know, give the duck a name and a, and a sound. And I, I sort of apologize here. We're kind of running off to the side here. But nothing, nothing too shocking, except that we now have dunder in it to, to set those two attributes when the thing is created, and then our help, or our hello method rather, refers to them as it prints out its little message. So we can compile that so that works, okay. And yes, Donald can quack, yay, wonderful. Okay, and if we look now at the dictionary for the duck class, it's got more stuff, okay, right? 
It's got, and I, I realize this is a little bit tangled, but it's got a dunder in it entry in its dictionary now, which points to that method, uh, which it just refers to as a function. It's got a hello entry, which points to the hello entry, you know, and all of the rest. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and if we look at Donald itself, the instance, the object that inherits from it, it has its instance attributes, name and sound. Cool. Um, but there are a couple of, of silly things about classes that quite often don't get much airplay. Uh, and I think I really should maybe emphasize one more time, what I'm about to show you is for educational purposes only, it has very little practical use. Don't you go putting this stuff into production saying I told you to do this, okay? Do not. Um, but there's some stuff going on. So in Python it is common, you can use the class name as a function to create an instance of that class, right? Not just with classes we create, but we can give something that is uh, like even a string containing a one uh, to uh, int and use it to make an int. Or we can give a bunch of stuff to list and use the list function to create a list or a dictionary or whatever it might be. So, since class and type are the same thing, that should imply that we can use type as a function to create a class. Okay? So let's do a couple of things here. I am going to make an init function that I call init func. And this is not part of a class, right? This is just a function that stands alone. I'm using self as a parameter, but that's just uh, by convention. I could use thingy or whatever and it takes a name, and then I sort of add that to, to self's name attribute. Uh, and I've got a, a stir funct that basically will report some stuff about what it is. And again, it's, uh, sorry for cutting it off, but I wanted the code to be large and easy to read. Uh, but so, you know, just sort of looks at the name and the class and whatever and says what it is. And then I've got a dictionary that I call namespace, could call it anything, uh, that basically maps the string dunder in it to my init func and the string uh, dunder stir to my stir func. Okay, if you've done much with classes, you probably know where I'm going with this. Uh, but in any case, if I do that and look at namespace, you can see all I've got are those two entries pointing to my, uh, my functions. Then, if I wanted to make a class from scratch, uh, and I realize thinking about it, that's kind of a weird English idiom. Uh, if you are making something from scratch, that means you're making it from the rawest materials, okay? You're, you're making the cake from all of the uh, separate ingredients rather than from stuff in a box. Uh, so, um, I, at least I gather people still make stuff from the actual ingredients, never done it myself. Uh, but in any case, you do that, you can use the type function uh, and give it the name you want your class to have. A, you can give it a list of base classes, uh, not a list, excuse me, a tuple of base classes. In this case, I'm not, it's just an empty tuple. And you can give it a dictionary to serve as the beginnings of its namespace. And if you do this, you actually end up with a class. And if you sort of look around here, you can see we've got our various things here that uh, are um, mapped into the dictionary. So dunder init is now pointing to that function I made init func, dunder stir is pointing to that stir func. Uh, so that's there. If I wanted, I could add class variables into that dictionary as well, and it would work just fine. So that's, that, that sort of gets us here. And if we make a scratch object now, and print it and look at it, yeah, we have a class, and it works. Okay, again, not a whole lot of practical uh, use for this. I can see I've got to talk much faster to get through the good stuff. Uh, so in any case, a couple more things real quick. For one thing, we know all about um, the fact that we can have various methods. 
Okay, so I've got hello, goodbye. Uh, I need to move fast. One other funky thing we can do, of course, is we can explicitly use the class and pass it the instance as its parameter, as the self. And that works fine. But here's another thing. We can use our duck class, and we can call its methods, and we can pass it another type of, uh, an object of another class. So remember, I made my scratch object just a couple screens above. If I do this, does that work? Okay, I mean, I'm calling duck hello and duck goodbye with a scratch object. Does it let me even do that? Well, of course it does. Um, it, uh, probably most of you were never silly enough to even give this a try, but it works. You can also, here, same class, I've added a farewell separate method here, all right? Oops, I need to do some compiling, there we go. And I can run this. Goodbye, farewell, both work. However, I can also uh, change my goodbye method to another function, make a new instance, and it will work now with a new method there, okay? I've replaced the methods. Question is, I already had a class, an instance of that class using the old method. What happens to it now? Does it work? Does it use the old one? Does it use the new one? It also uses the new one. And in fact, if I deleted it, if I deleted that goodbye method, I would get an error. If I then decided to uh, add the old one back in, that works. So all of that silliness is what we, we call monkey patching. It is not recommended if you're new to Python and you're like, wow, I have to go off and do some monkey patching. No, do not do that. Uh, or do, I'm not, I'm not the police, go do it, but it's, it's dangerous. So uh, it makes giving yourself a headache really, really easy. So don't do that. Okay, meta classes, I, I, so I, got, I got two minutes to do meta classes, so you're really going to have to concentrate. Um, but um, we can, of course, inherit from type and change the way it behaves. So I want to just quickly show you this. This is a, if say we wanted to make uh, a type of class that could only have one instance, a singleton thing, okay? Uh, and you, you're probably going to want to refer to this later if, you, if you're not already following me. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to overload the call method. When we use the class name in parentheses to make a new instance, it's going to check and see if there's already an instance listed. If there is, it just returns that. Otherwise, it gives you a new, new class object. Okay, so I can do that as a meta class. This class single is going to be a meta class. It inherits from type. Uh, and then I'm going to make my new class uh, using that meta class, class single. Actually, I better do this first. There we go. All right. And then, when I call it the first time, it makes a new class because it doesn't have one. When I make a, a second instance, it does not do that because it already has one. Okay, so that's just kind of a way, and if you're thinking like ORMs use this meta class trick all of the time so that they can control the way that things sort of pick things up off of the database, etc. So that is one use, one very simple example of how you can do um, a meta class uh, that may make sense. I mean, when I talk to people, they're always like, oh, meta classes, I know I know this. Uh, the good news, and of course I can do other classes as well, but uh, these two instances are exactly the same object, uh, and I could go on and make more. In the interest of getting through this, I won't. Um, but the thing is, that lets you change how classes behave, and here's the key. Uh, I encourage you to play with them and get to know them. That's fine. Uh, but the key to is whether or not you need to use a meta class in production is you will already know for sure you must use a meta class. If you're asking yourself, hmm, I wonder if I should use them, no, you should not then. 
Okay, that, that's the rule. That's been the rule since the beginning of meta classes. So, wrapping up, almost everything is an object, classes, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, and you can mess with meta classes to do that. And thank you very much. I almost made it. All right. Any questions? I left them speechless. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the great talk. So it's usually I teach meta class in half a day. You do it in two minutes. That's very ambitious. A question: You overall the Danto call to do a single. I would have over the Danto new. What's the advantage using Danto call versus Danto new? Um, I I'm not sure that there's really an advantage. Um, actually, what I asked myself when I was doing it is: there any disadvantage? And I couldn't find one for that either. I think it's more just a matter of how you wanted to do it. And I wanted to kind of grab things as early as I could, so that's why I chose call. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, do you have another example where you can, where you should use meta classes besides ORM? Um, you know, I was trying to think of that, and I've been coding Python, well, for nearly 25 years, and. I know that I used it once in my career in production, and I cannot remember what it was we were doing. So no, I don't, actually. Uh, well, I mean, like if you wanted to do something where you were controlling the registration for some other resource, in effect, vaguely some variation on, on a singleton or something like that, or you wanted to track them, yeah, but I don't have a good example. Do you? No, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right, let's all thank Naomi for a very classy talk. And we're taking a break now. Thank you. Thank you.